when i was younger my grandfather used to tell me stories about how everything used to cost two cents when he was a kid but now everything's 10 times more expensive and it always seems to be the government's fault these uneducated people don't know how to control prices he'd say and he would go on and on for hours complaining about everything that's wrong with the world as i got older i realized this is exactly what reactive people do they always focus on the things they can't control now, my grandfather had a point. Things are a lot harder than they used to be. And we are working 10 times harder than we should be. But there's no point in complaining about it because we can't change it. Reactive people like to complain, do nothing, and just sit in their bitterness. While proactive people, on the other hand, realize, look, me complaining literally doesn't change anything. And this is the reality of the world. Instead of wasting my time focused on what I can't control, I'm going to spend my time changing the things that I can. Habit one is to be proactive. Rather than reacting and being shocked, act on the things that you can do to change your circumstance and actually solve the problem. This is the main difference between ineffective people and highly effective people. Ineffective people just react and do nothing while highly effective people just act. Next, I want you to imagine yourself at a funeral. You're standing over a casket and you see an elderly version of yourself who's reached the end of his life. Now, what would you have to say about yourself? This is one of the most powerful questions that you could ask. It makes you reflect and look at your current reality. Are you currently doing the things in your life that align with what you want to be able to say about it in the end? Do you want to be able to say that you were a great spouse? If that's the case, how does coming home and instantly being negative and consistently arguing with your partner reflect that? Do you want to be remembered as a great man who accomplished something and added value to others' lives? If that's the case, are you consistently taking the steps forward each day and achieving new accomplishments? Or are you going home after work and just scrolling through Instagram or TikTok all day? After truly taking the time and visualizing the end, almost every single one of us have to reanalyze and readjust our lives after asking this question. But that's okay. It's better to realize now than to never realize at all. Habit two is always begin with the end in mind. This means with every single thing that we do, we have to make it a habit to begin with the end in mind. If we make this a habit before we even start something, we can quickly identify whether it's a waste of our time and avoid meaningless activities. Okay, I'm gonna ask you a question. What's the most important thing in the world to you? Think about it. The answer for most people is gonna be something like family, friends, good health, or making money, something along those lines. And all of those things are absolutely correct. There is really no wrong answer to this question. None of us would ever say watching TV, scrolling through your phone, or mopping the floors at work. In our heads, we won't even put any of these things in the same category as important, especially not the most important in the world. I mean, think about it. That would be crazy, right? Well, apparently not. How many of us spend more time watching TV, scrolling through our phones, or working at a dead-end job that barely has any benefits than actually spending time with our families, our friends, working out, or actually spending time to come up with creative ways and ideas to make money? Let me see a show of hands. <sighs> exactly. We claim that these things are important to us, yet we spend the least amount of time on them. There's a horrible disconnect between what we say and what we actually spend our time on. Habit number three is always put important things first. Whenever planning out your day or planning for the future, we need to reflect and make sure the majority of our time is spent on the things that we find important. Now, I want you to imagine you're a chef and I'm a chef, and we both have our own restaurant and both of our restaurants are fairly successful. I walk into your restaurant and try your food. I really like it, so I decide to share my experience with my customers. And as a result, you now have a few thousand new customers who are trying and enjoying your food. You notice this and you're like, who is this guy? Let me visit his restaurant. Then you visit my restaurant and enjoy the food. As a result, you decide to share your experience with your customers. As a result, I now have thousands of new customers who are trying and enjoying my food. 
I want you to notice how different this is from me viewing this as a competition and badmouthing your restaurant to each and every customer I get a chance to, in hopes that this will defer a few people from visiting your restaurant. Habit four is to think a win for a win. We need to stop seeing everything as a competition where for you to win, another person has to lose. Not everyone is our enemy. Actually, a lot can be learned from our competitors and it's far more intelligent to be friends with your competitors than to have a negative relationship. This is more realistic to how highly effective people become successful. They enlist the help of others around them and help each other out. They create opportunities where not only they gain, but others gain as well. Something that most of us want is to clearly and effectively be understood. We'd like to be respected when we speak and would like our words to mean something. Have you ever wanted someone to get something or to understand you and you just couldn't get across to them? Look, the truth is that it's hard for people to understand you if you don't first understand them. Doesn't matter how much you want someone to listen and understand you, if they don't feel heard and understood, it's almost like talking to a brick wall. Instead of asking yourself, why are people so stubborn and hard-headed? The real question you should be asking yourself is, do I understand why this person feels this way? And do I make them feel like I understand them? This is why a lot of relationships fail and why a lot of friendships end due to miscommunication and misunderstanding. <laughs> Habit number five is to first seek that you understand, then to be understood. This is a super powerful habit and a very masculine high value trait to listen a lot and speak little because by doing this you'll have a firm understanding of what the other person is trying to convey and when you do finally decide to speak your words will speak volumes and hold weight next i want you to imagine there are two people who are trying to lift a boulder they both can't lift the boulder on their own but if they work together they can easily lift the boulder with half the effort this is called synergy. The whole is greater than the sum of its parts. This basically means that we're much stronger together than individually. Now, I'll admit, you can't achieve synergy with everyone, but you should try your best to find opportunities to create synergy. With each synergistic opportunity you create, you'll lift five times, 10 times, maybe even a hundred times more boulders you would have been able to lift on your own. Habit number six is to synergize. People who are highly effective know you can get a lot more done together rather than alone. A man has been trying to chop down a tree for hours and after a while his neighbor can't stand it anymore. So he walks over and says, you know, if you sharpen that ax, you'll be able to cut down that tree much faster. And the man replies in frustration, but sharpening the ax is gonna take time. Now I know this is a fairly simple story and a pretty easy concept to follow. This story might be a little funny and most of us will say that the man with the ax is completely clueless. But how many of us find ourselves having ambitions and goals, but never even starting on them? Habit number seven is sharpen the ax. We put in eight hours at our busy, stressful jobs just to come home and not even put a single hour into our own personal projects or goals. We are the man with the ax. We can't find 30 minutes a day to go to the gym. We can't spend an hour a day working on our personal projects, business ideas, or even trying to follow our dreams. It's almost like we've completely given up on ourselves and walk around acting like we haven't. We're completely incapable of being effective. We look for cheat codes, tips, and tricks to success. And the truth is, we all know that there is no such thing. It's like trying to build a house without any blueprints or plan and expecting it to turn out well. We're obsessed with the idea of being successful, but don't actually want to put in the effort to. Stop wasting your time and spending all of it on things that aren't important and make sure to put in an hour or two each day into our own personal goals, dreams, and aspirations. Set some time aside for your own projects. Stop using a dull ax and take the time out the day to sharpen it so that you can be effective. These are the seven habits of highly effective people by Stephen Covey. By following all seven of these principles and making them a habit, I'm almost 100% certain you'll become a highly effective person. If you enjoyed the video or found it helpful at all, go ahead and hit the like button. If you haven't already, what are you waiting for? 
subscribe and turn on post notifications so that you can continue to see our videos and get your weekly dose of betterness. And if you super enjoyed the video, leave a super thanks. It's like leaving a little tip and it directly helps out the channel. And remember, with every one of our videos you watch, you take one step closer to becoming an even better version of yourself. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, stay smooth like butter.